Welcome to part 5 of the two player pinball machine build. In the last episode, I built the tunnels that run underneath the playing surface of the machine to connect both sides. In this episode, I'll be building the plungers that launch the pinballs. I started by putting together the blocks that will hold the plunger in place. I cut blocks of birch wood and glued them together. The reason I'm using birch for this job is because birch is much more durable than plywood and will easily handle the pressure from the plunger. It'll also be easier to get the precision from the birch that may not be possible with the plywood. While that was drying, I moved on to the plunger rod. In order to keep the springs in the right place, I needed to use an E-clip. However, I've never used one before, so I did a test on an extra piece of rod. I cut a groove and hammered it in place. I wanted to make sure it would hold the pressure from the springs, so I tried my best to pull it out of place. These things work a lot better than I expected. It's always fun when you discover something new. By now, the blocks had dried enough to pull out of the clamps. I laid out all the pieces of the plunger to get a fairly accurate estimate on the length of the rod. I cut them to length, giving a few extra inches that will be trimmed down to final length later on. Now that I have the two rods for the two plungers, I put the stopper on the end, marked the spot for the two clips, and cut the grooves. The red spring with the black stopper is the fire side, and the blue spring with the white stopper is the ice side. The pinballs measure at 1.06 inches in diameter, so half of that is 0.53 inches. I use calipers to mark where the center of the pinball hits the center of the block. That'll be the spot for the plunger. I mark the same spot on both sides of the block. I started drilling the hole with a small bit to try and get as exactly vertical as possible. A drill press would have come in handy right about now, but I'll just have to make do. I rotated the block as I drove in the bit to help get exactly vertical. I slowly graduated to bigger and bigger bits until I reached the desired inner diameter. On the pinball side, I hammered in a bushing with a lip for the red or blue spring to press against. This way, the spring is pressing on the metal bushing and the metal e-clip. If it was pressing into the wood, it could cause problems down the road. I toyed around with the idea of having multiple bushings for the same plunger, but I had alignment issues that kept it from working smoothly. So that first bushing with the lip around the front will be the only one. I marked and drilled the holes for the rod to stick outside of the machine. This bushing was eventually removed. Okay. 
When it was ready, I glued both blocks into place. The pinballs are 1 and 1 16th inches in diameter. All the lanes are going to be an inch and a quarter wide, except for right here. Since there will be a gap between this wall and the rest of the wall for the launch corridor, it will sit slightly closer to the ball. It will only have the wiggle room of a few sheets of paper. I use the paper and pinball to place the wall in the right spot during gluing. Here, you can see how snug the pinball is at the launch. The other side received the same treatment. I then worked on the wall for the rest of the straight part of the launch. You can see here how the walls are slightly offset. The pinballs coming off the plunger will not catch on that corner because the launch corridor gets wider. The next thing to work on is the handles for the plunger. There's a number of ways to build this part of the plunger, but I decided on a handle that is easy to use and will be able to deal with plenty of use. Just like the bushing blocks, I used birch wood. I cut out circles to stack and made a barrel that's an inch and a half long. I found the center and drilled a hole most of the way through that would snugly fit the plunger rod. Just like the blocks, I started small and worked my way up. I'm going to attach these handles to the rod with set screws, so I drilled the holes for those going right through the center of the handle. The plunger rod still hasn't been trimmed down to its final length, so I figured out how much to trim and cut it down. Next, 
I marked and drilled the holes for the set screws to go through the rod. The set screws will crisscross through the rod so it doesn't wobble. I didn't put these set screws in all the way because they'll need to be removed for a future step, but they've proved that they'll work and hold the handle in place while launching the pinballs. This plunger clearly has the strength to launch the pinballs. There'll be a curve at the top so the launch sends the pinballs onto your own side and not your opponent's side. That curve will be added later on. And that's it for this video. The plunger works great. There's still a few things to do to help its longevity, but getting to this point is a big deal. In the next video, I'll be building the flippers. That's it for now. See ya!